Jurisdiction Part 3 RTC. So pag pinag-uusapan ang jurisdiction, especially the jurisdiction of your regular courts, you have to study BP or Batas Pambansa bilang 129. Also include in your readings RA 7691 where it amended some provisions of BP bilang 129. So recall our Odeska. Odeska means the original, delegated, exclusive, original, special, concurrent, and appellate. So let's find out what's the Odeska of the RTC. Meron bang original jurisdiction si RTC? Answer is yes. Very clear under section 21 of your BP 129, RTC exercises original jurisdiction in the issuance of writs of CPM, that is your certiorari, prohibition, and mandamus. Recall that this is your Rule 65 of the Rules of Court. This is a special civil action. What else? Meron ding original jurisdiction si RTC in the issuance of the writ of Co Waranto. This is your Rule 66. Again, another special civil action. What else? You have your habeas corpus and then injunction. Injunction is a provisional remedy or a main action. Remember that. Ano pa ang original jurisdiction? Number two, RTC exercises original jurisdiction in actions affecting ambassadors other public ministers and consuls. So this is the original jurisdiction of the RTC according to BP 129. Next is delegated jurisdiction. Meron bang delegated jurisdiction si RTC? Answer is no. Unlike MTC na merong delegated jurisdiction, take note ha si RTC, walang delegated jurisdiction. How about exclusive original? Section 19 of your BP 129 enumerates the cases wherein the RTC can exercise exclusive original jurisdiction. But take note that this sec section 19 was amended by Section 1 of the Republic Act 7691. Number one, all civil actions in which the subject of the litigation is incapable of pecuniary estimation. Take note ha, if you are going to take the bar exams or if you are going to write that in your booklet, dapat ang isusulat nyo is incapable of pecuniary estimation. I know that it is also correct when you say that the subject of the litigation is not capable of pecuniary estimation. But as soon to be a lawyer, you used what is written in the law. And what is written in the law is incapable of pecuniary estimation. So when can you say that a civil action is incapable of pecuniary estimation? According to the Supreme Court decisions, the first thing that you have to do is determine the nature of the principal action or the remedy sought. Bakit? Because if there is a case and primarily that case is for recovery of a sum of money, then that case is considered a a case capable of pecuniary estimation. And ano ang mangyayari dyan? You have to determine now what is the amount because the amount will determine the jurisdiction whether it will fall in the MTC or in the RTC. But if there is a case but money claim is purely incidental to or money claim is only consequence of the principal relief sought, then that is the time that you can consider that that case is incapable of pecuniary estimation. And which court has the jurisdiction? Answer is RTC. So what are examples of cases incapable of pecuniary estimation? You have your specific performance, support, Cases questioning the validity of a mortgage, 
if you want to annul a deed of sale or a deed of conveyance, if you want to recover the price paid in a deed of sale or for an or for your action for recession. Your action for recession is a counterpart of specific performance. So these are some of the examples of cases incapable of pecuniary estimation. Ano pa ang exclusive original jurisdiction ng RTC? You have the real action. Again, what is a real action? It is one which involves Title II real property or possession of real property or any interest in that real property. But you have to consider here the assessed value of that real property. If you are in Metro Manila, the amount should exceed 50,000 pesos. And if you are outside Metro Manila, the amount should exceed 20,000 pesos. Number three is a personal action that is an action in admiralty and maritime jurisdiction. Here you have to consider the demand or claim because the demand or claim if you are in Metro Manila should exceed 400,000 pesos and if you are outside Metro Manila, make sure that the demand or claim exceeds 300,000 pesos for the RTC to acquire jurisdiction. Number four is all matters of probate, whether testate or intestate. Here, you have to consider the gross value of the estate. If you are in Metro Manila, you have to make sure that the value should exceed 400,000 pesos. And if you are outside Metro Manila, make sure that the gross value of the estate exceeds 300,000 pesos. Number five, all actions involving the contract of marriage and marital relations. But you recall your Republic Act number 8369. This is the Family Courts Act of 1997. Nilipat na dyan ang jurisdiction regarding annulment of marriage, declaration of nullity of marriage, separation of property, Nandiyan na ang jurisdiction sa family courts. But you read section 17 because there are areas where there are no family courts. In that case, si RTC ang may jurisdiction. You read also section 3. That is the ideal. Dapat may family court daw sa bawat province and city in the country. But we all know that sometimes that this is not possible. Kaya... You correlate that to your section 17. Number six is all cases not within the exclusive jurisdiction of any court, tribunal, person, or body exercising jurisdiction or exercising judicial or quasi-judicial functions. Ito ang tinatawag nila na general jurisdiction ng RTC. This is the reason why may mga nababasa kayo na your RTC is a court of general jurisdiction. Number seven, all civil actions and special proceedings falling within the exclusive original jurisdiction of a juvenile and domestic relations court and of the court of agrarian relations as now provided by law. Take note ha, dun sa juvenile and domestic relations court, nalipat na yan sa family courts. Kasi lahat ng child cases, lahat ng family cases, nasa family courts. Number eight is all other cases in which the demand or the value of the property, ang tinutukoy dyan na property is personal property ha value of the personal property in controversy if you are in metro manila it should exceed 400,000 pesos and if you are outside metro manila the demand or the value of the personal property should exceed 300,000 pesos sa lahat ng mga cases under the jurisdiction of the courts you have to remember always the rule of dialect Again, what is dialect? That is your damages, interest, attorney's fees, litigation expenses, and costs. So what is the rule? You include and then you exclude. You include if you are going to pay your filing fees, but you exclude if you are going to determine the jurisdiction of the 
Court. Puntahan natin si Republic Act number no. 8799. So that is your Securities Regulation Code. Paano tayo napunta dito? Because if you are going to read Section 5 of RA 8799, that is the Powers and Functions of the Commission, very clear si Section 5.2 that the Commission's jurisdiction, the Commission here is referring to the Securities and Exchange Commission, the jurisdiction of the SEC over all cases enumerated under Section 5 of PD 902-A, is hereby transferred to the Courts of General Jurisdiction, that is your RTC. Section 5 of PD 902-A is very clear that before SEC, ang merong original and exclusive jurisdiction to hear and decide cases, but now it is with the RTC. So, devices or schemes employed by the Board of Directors business associates, officers, or partnership, or any acts of the board of directors, business associates, officers, or partnership, but you have to make sure that those devices or those acts amount to fraud and misrepresentation and they are detrimental to the interest of the public or the stockholders, partners, members of associations, or organizations. So in that case, sino again ang my jurisdiction? It is no longer SEC but RTC. What else? You have the famous intracorporate controversies or partnership relations controversies. Take note ha that itong intracorporate controversies, it can be between and among stockholders, members, or associates. Yung mga, yung mga stockholders lang ang mga nag-aaway. Pwede rin maging intracorporate controversy between a stockholder and a corporation. And it can also be between a corporation and the government or the state. Ano pa? Number three, if there is any controversy in the election or appointment of directors, trustees, officers, or managers of the corporation, partnership, or associations, and last, if, if there is this petition of a corporation to be declared in a state of suspension of payments. How about the special jurisdiction of the RTC? Section 23 of BP 129 is very clear that the Supreme Court may designate certain branches of the RTC to handle or to try special cases. So ito yung basis bakit meron ka na ngayong drugs court, yung special commercial courts. So let's go now to the concurrent jurisdiction. Alam nyo na to, si RTC, si CA, and Supreme Court, meron silang original jurisdiction over cases of CPM, Kowaranto, Habeas, Corpus. But kahit meron silang original jurisdiction, they share it with other courts. Kaya yan ay concurrent. And take note, just take note that si RTC and Supreme Court Merong concurrent jurisdiction over cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls. Pag pinag-uusapan palagi si concurrent jurisdiction, do not forget the principle of hierarchy of courts. Kasi sabi nga natin, yung dalawa ay magkapatid. Recall also this slide, ito pa yung ibang cases wherein the courts exercises concurrent jurisdiction. Huwag kalimutan ha, hak, hak, ha. So, this is your habeas data, amparo, habeas corpus, continuing mandamus, and kalikasan. Recall also your rules of procedure for environmental cases. Take note ha, si RTC and si MTC merong concurrent jurisdiction over enforcement or violation of environmental and other related laws, rules, and regulations. How about the appellate jurisdiction of the RTC? Section 22 has the answer for all cases decided by the MTC saan ngayon i-a-appeal, of course, sa RTC. But do not include those 
uh, cases decided by the MTC wherein it is a case of delegated jurisdiction. Kasi pag yan ay delegated jurisdiction, then ang appeal mo is definitely hindi sa RTC but sa Court of Appeals. Let me end this video through this 2016 number one bar exam question. State at least five civil cases that fall under the exclusive original jurisdiction of the RTC. If you cannot enumerate five civil cases, then let me now tell you that you have a very, very big problem. Bakit? Because this is a very, very, very basic question. Ang equivalent nito is 1 plus 1 at hindi mo alam. Or let us just say that ikaw naman ay nakasagot but nasagutan mo more than 5 minutes. Baka inabot ka ng 7 minutes or 10 minutes. Then you also have a big problem. Bakit? Because this is a number one question and number one question pa lang na ubus na ang let's say 8 minutes mo. Malaking problema yan. Kaya as early as now, especially if you are taking the bar exams, you strategized how to answer these kinds of question. I challenge you. Now, go to your computer, go to your laptop, and then you answer this question, you timed yourself, and tingnan nyo kung paano kayo mag-perform.